Words in a are a very common form of French slang, but not all words in French with a are actually slang. Let's learn and understand a few of them so you can actually use them in your everyday spoken French. This is what you will learn in today's video. As a beginner, you should focus on remembering that some words in slang in French are formed with a at the end and also focus just on remembering the ones of part one, which is the one about uh, belonging and having a link with. It's l'appartenance. We'll see that in part one. As an intermediate learner, uh, remember all the things about the beginner part and the popular French part, which is part two. And as an advanced learner, I highly recommend you remember all the forms of the R words. This is going to help you in your everyday spoken French to notice them and to use them later. Just like for all our lessons on Commune Française, you can get the full written lesson in PDF form on the blog on CommuneFrancaise.com. There you have all the expressions, the vocabulary and the extra resources mentioned in the video. You can also download it to take notes, highlight and read it later. Don't miss that, especially if you're on YouTube. Bonjour, c'est Géraldine. Bienvenue sur Commune Française. C'est parti First, what is R? R is what we call a suffix because it comes at the end of a word, which is what we'll see later. And if you're already familiar a bit with this form of French, you will know that the feminine uh, version is ARD. So as you can see in masculine, it's R, we end with the sound R, and the feminine one pronounced the D at the end, ARD. Okay? But it's not always slang, okay? Lots of them are, but not all of them, and this is what we're going to see now. There are different categories of words with a. The first one is un signe d'appartenance, okay? When you add the suffix, it adds this idea of a link, of belonging, and these ones are not slang. Second, you have a popular meaning. Adding the suffix adds a little bit of, um, of everyday French to it. And then we have the bad side, which is pejoratif. It means a negative. It, it adds a meaning of something that is judged in a bad way. There are also other um, categories for the R words, but I'm not going to cover them today because I wanted to give you very, very clear parts so you can identify and understand them best. We're going to see the simpler ones in this part so you can understand them instead of just memorizing them. In the blog post of this lesson, I'm going to share with you also the, another resource with lots of other words that you can learn if you wish to. First, let's talk about l'appartenance ou le lien. Appartenir in French is to belong, okay? So you see the meaning here. So that's neutral French or familiar French. It's not vulgar French, you can use it with almost anyone, but um, it's everyday spoken French, so this is why it's so interesting today. That's the easiest part. So if you're a beginner, focus on that. So for example, la montagne. La montagne is the mountain in French. So someone who has a link or belongs to the mountain area is un montagnard, un montagnard. Obviously, as we said before, for a woman, it will be une montagnarde, okay? That's, the ease, that's everything you have to remember about this part for um, the words in ar. When you belong, you take a place and you add ar at the end. So, for example, this is a noun. Let's look at the adjective part, and this is where there's a trick. Montagnard is linked to the mountain, montagnard. But if you want to say someone, something that has mountains, like a country or a region, you say montagneux, montagneux, okay? So both are adjectives linked to mountains, but they don't mean the same. Montagnard linked to the mountain, montagneux, which has mountains. For example, we say la vie montagnarde, la vie montagnarde, it means life in the mountains. But we say un pays montagneux, un pays montagneux. It's a country which has mountains, for example, Switzerland. Let's look at a few more examples. La campagne is countryside. La campagne, so someone who lives in the countryside, is un campagnard. Un com campagnard. La Savoie is just next door to Grenoble. La Savoie, someone who lives in La Savoie or comes from there, is un savoyard. Un savoyard. And just notice if you're a bit advanced that we put a capital S 
because that's um, not like a nationality or an origin. Just like for commune française, there's a capital F. It's exactly the same, even though it's a noun. But if you're a beginner, you can forget about that. We saw La Savoie, but as you may know, there's another département that is called La Haute Savoie. La Haute Savoie, so someone who is from there is un Haut Savoyard, un Haut Savoyard. And someone who likes to drive on a motorcycle, which is called une moto in French, une moto, someone who drives it is un motard, un motard. And again, if it's a woman, it's une motarde, une motarde. You see, it's pretty simple. Now, let's look at how R can add une note populaire. Une note populaire is kind of a popular angle, this kind of meaning of everyday spoken French. Again, this is neutral or familiar. It's not vulgar, just so don't use it in your French exams or don't tell anyone I told you that, but you can use it with your French friends. Un costume becomes un costard. That makes it more popular. Un costard for un costume. This is what we saw in Les Vieux Fourneaux episode, if you remember. If you have un français, un français, the adjective we have, which is something I love and that we saw in Les Vieux Fourneaux as well, is franchouillard, franchouillard. As you can see here, we, we changed the original noun a little bit, but that makes it very popular. It sounds very easy to access, very fun, very simple, franchouillard. It's kind of a cliche of a French person. Then if we take rond, that's uh, round, but it means fat, that's the meaning, like gros in this sense, we add R and it becomes rondouillard, rondouillard. And as you can see here, it's the same structure as franchouillard, okay? You have the ouillard form at the end. So rond for gros, which is fat, becomes rondouillard, rondouillard. Then we have something that's we have one that I really like because a friend of mine uses this word. It's un saucisson. Un saucisson, it's kind of a sausage that is dried. Un saucisson becomes un sauciflard. Un sauciflard. Again, this is popular French. Don't go to the charcutier and ask for one because that would be weird. But that's how we would use it in everyday spoken French. Un sauciflard. Um, uh, one... Last word that we have is uh, une pantoufle. Une pantoufle is this kind of shoes that you keep at home, okay, when you're just walking around at home, sometimes in your pajamas or whatever. So une pantoufle. We use it to make the adjective pantouflard. Pantouflard, it means someone who likes to stay at home, not necessarily wearing those shoes, but it's the idea of being well at home. I don't want to move. I don't want to go out. I don't want to be too active. There's another adjective that this one is formal that you can use everywhere. It means exactly the same. It's casanier. Casanier is someone who likes to stay at home. So these are examples where you can really understand where they come from. And instead of learning them just by heart, because you understand them, everything is much easier to remember and to use them later. In this third part, let's look at how R can add un sens péjoratif. So that's a negative side. It's familiar French or vulgar French, so be careful when you use it. However, lots of them you will read in the newspapers, in books, and, and here on movies. But just be careful when you use them to make sure that you really understand the context around the word. So first, we have un chauffeur. Un chauffeur is a driver, just one who doesn't have to be a private driver like a taxi but it can be just someone who drive, drives a car. So that's un chauffeur. If we want to talk about someone who drives too fast or drives badly, misbehaves on the road, we say un chauffeur, un chauffeur. So we go from un chauffeur, un chauffeur, that's someone neutral, to un chauffeur, and that, that's something bad, un chauffeur. Let's take, an, a, let's take a look at another example that is already an insult, so that's really bad already. That's un con, un Con. That's an insult. Don't use it. That's a bad word. That's swearing. But if we want to make it even worse in a way, more popular, more negative, we add R at the end and that makes another insult, which is un connard. Un connard. Again, you probably already heard about that, but I wanted to show you how this is formed. Don't use it, please. It's just for 
the example and showing you how these words are made. Let's go back a little bit and take another familiar word. It's not an insult at all. That's la flemme. La flemme is when you are lazy. That's laziness. You don't want to go out. You're probably a bit pantouflard. You have la flemme. J'ai la flemme. We say avoir la flemme. And we add ar at the end to make un flemmard. Un flemmard. You can use the adjective as well. Flemmard. And that means someone who has la flemme, who doesn't want to go out. So you see... You can have just one word, add ar, and you have two. That's fantastic. La flemme makes un flemmard, or une flemmard as well. Um, another similar word, because they're built exactly in the same way, we have la frousse. La frousse, just like la flemme for being lazy, la frousse is fear. That's la peur in normal, formal French. La frousse, la frousse, la peur... We add ar at the end and it makes un froussard, un froussard, or une froussarde, obviously. It's someone who is afraid, who has, is not very brave, okay? La frousse makes froussard with ar at the end. Another word that we have for la peur is la trouille, la trouille. Again, this is not vulgar French, it's just familiar everyday French. La trouille is la peur in uh, slang. We add ar at the end and it makes un trouillard, un trouillard, or une trouillard in the feminine way. So you see, it's pretty easy French that you can use everywhere, that you will hear much, much, much more than that now that you know them. Now, à ton tour, let's have a quiz. Try to find out the meaning of those words. So, Beginner level, what do you think about un banlieusard? Un banlieusard, what does this mean? Also, un fêtard, un fêtard. If you're intermediate, what does un tésard mean? Un tésard. If you're intermediate, obviously do the beginner part as well. Okay. Uh, if you're more advanced, also think about what does un binoclar mean? Un binoclar. And if you're very advanced, That's the fun challenge, un tolar, un tolar, okay? I'm leaving you a few seconds to think about that. So according to your level, do you like two, three, four, five? Think about them and I'm going to give you the answers right away. Okay, so what did you think about that? Un banlieusard, you probably already know the word la banlieue. La banlieue is the part around the city, la banlieue. So, un banlieusard is someone who lives in la banlieue, the, the part around the city. Un fêtard, it's pretty easy as well. It comes from la fête. La fête is the party, so un fêtard is someone who likes to party. La fête makes un fêtard when you add the suffix ar at the end. Une thèse. Une thèse is a thesis or a PhD in French. That's really that. So if someone is doing une thèse in French, they're doing a PhD in English. And uh, someone who does une thèse is un thésar. It's not, uh, this is not vulgar or pejorative. It's the normal neutral word. Binoclar is a bit more difficult because you have to know the original word. But if you speak English, you maybe might have found out. Des lunettes, des lunettes are glasses, the ones that you can wear on your on nose, yes. So, des lunettes makes des binocles in slang, des binocles or in old French, and we make it un binoclar. Un binoclar is someone who wears glasses, and obviously in feminine uh, it makes une binoclarde, une binoclar, like I actually am. Un dollar is the most advanced because it includes a slang word that has nothing to do with your own language. So, la prison, la prison is a jail in French. And the slang word for la prison is la tôle, la tôle. And this makes un tolar. So, un tolar is someone who is in prison. And that's it for the quiz. So, how many did you guess? Et toi, so tell me in the comments below the video, quel est ton mot en art préféré de la leçon or outside of the lesson? Quel est ton mot en art préféré? For example, if you want to answer in French, this is a structure that works. Mon mot en art préféré est binoclar parce que je porte des lunettes. 
mon mot en art préféré est binoclar parce que je porte des lunettes. This would be my answer. If you like this lesson about art and you learn lots of new words, please share this lesson with a francophile friend. It's a fantastic way to support my work on Common Français and help your friend. If you want more spoken French, just go to communefrances.com and get the 10-day everyday French crash course. It's a free 10-day mini course to sound French, even to the French. Students love it. You can just join anytime and receive lesson one straight away. You just have to leave your first name and email on communefrances.com. I wish you a fantastic day. I hope you love this lesson. Allez, salut!